Endometriosis The presence of endometrial tissue, glands, and stroma outside of the uterine cavity. Etiology Samson's Implantation Theory Proposed by Samson Endometriosis occurs as a result of reflux of menstrual endometrium through the fallopian tubes. Subsequently, it gets implanted and grows on the pelvic peritoneum and surrounding structures. Metastatic Theory Proposed by Halban The theory suggests embolization of menstrual fragments occurs through vascular or lymphatic channels. This leads to the launching of endometriosis at distant sites. Explains the occurrence of endometriosis at less accessible sites like umbilicus, pelvic nodes, ureter, etc. Salamic Metaplasia Proposed by Meyer and Ivanov Endometriosis arises as a result of metaplastic changes in embryonal cell rest of embryonic mesothelium. These cell rests are capable of responding to hormone stimulation. Histogenesis by Induction the theory proposes that an endogenous, undefined, biochemical factor can induce undifferentiated peritoneal cells to develop into endometrial tissue. Iatrogenic During surgery, endometroid tissue getting implanted on the scar. It causes scar endometriosis. It can be seen on any scar involving the genital tract, more commonly seen at hysterotomy scar, classical cesarean section scar, myomectomy scar, episiotomy scar. Risk factors. Hormone, estrogen-dependent condition. Family history. Seven to ten-fold increased risk of affected first-degree relative. Obstructive anomalies of the genital tract. Nulliparity. High socioeconomic status due to late marriage and late childbirth. In utero exposure to diethylstilbestrol, stress, environmental pollution and contamination, protective factors, regular exercise, smoking, age, most common in 30 to 40 years, sites of occurrence, the most common site is ovary, second most common site is pouch of Douglas. Endometriosis can occur anywhere in the body, including the abdominal wall, lungs, pleura, brain, and arms. Endometriosis of the ovary is called endometrioma or chocolate cyst. Pathology Peritoneum Earliest lesion is red petechial lesion, later becoming cystic, dark brown, or blue-black. It's called a powder burn appearance or gunshot appearance. The presence of defects in the peritoneum, usually scarring overlying implants, is called Allen Master Syndrome. Peritoneal cavity contains yellowish brown fluid, which has prostaglandin responsible for the pain of endometriosis. Ovary Characteristic chocolate cyst True cysts with columnar lining epithelium. Beneath the epithelium are pseudoxanthoma cells, which are brown-colored due to ingested hemosiderin pigment. Chocolate cyst of the ovary. They are true cyst. The cyst enlarge with cyclic bleeding. The serum gets absorbed in between periods, and the content inside becomes chocolate, terry brown in color. Clinical features. May be asymptomatic. Classic triad of endometriosis is dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, and infertility. Dysmenorrhea The most common symptom is secondary dysmenorrhea, commencing after 30 years and gradually increasing, progressive dysmenorrhea. Deep-seated pelvic pain Premenstrual and postmenstrual spotting There is little correlation between the extent of disease and symptomatology. Pain coincides with the depth of the lesion. Dyspareunia. Dyspareunia occurs when the pouch of Douglas and rectovaginal septum are involved. Infertility. 30 to 40 percent of patients with endometriosis will be infertile. 15 to 30 percent of those who are infertile will have endometriosis. Deeper penetration has a greater incidence of pain. Endometriosis is also associated with hyperprolactinemia and galactorrhea.
deep penetrating endometriosis. These lesions can extend 10 millimeters or more down from the peritoneal surface. The deeper lesions appear to have a closer association with pain than infertility. Less deep lesions have a closer association with infertility than pain. Examination Tender nodularity of uterine ligaments and cul-de-sac felt on rectovaginal examination. A key indicator of endometriosis is the presence of a barb, a sharply defined, firm, and exquisitely tender area on the uterosacral ligament. This distinctive feature is considered the sine qua non or an essential and defining characteristic of endometriosis. The barb on the uterosacral ligament indicates the presence of endometriotic lesions or nodules that have infiltrated the ligament, leading to the symptomatology. Investigations The gold standard or intraoperative consultation is laparoscopy. Cancer antigen 125 levels are raised in endometriosis. But since there's a wide variety of conditions in which the levels are elevated, its greatest use may be in monitoring a patient serially for recurrence rather than diagnosis. Monocyte chemotactic protein levels are raised in the peritoneal fluid of women with endometriosis. Diagnostic laparoscopy. Typical lesion. Powder burn or gunshot lesion black, dark brown, or bluish cysts with old hemorrhage surrounded by variable degrees of fibrosis. Non-typical findings. Red implants, serous or clear vesicles, white plaques or scarring, yellowish-brown discoloration of peritoneum, sub-ovarian adhesions. Presence of defects in the peritoneum, usually scarring overlying implants, is called Allen-Master syndrome. Histological confirmation on laparoscopic impression is essential for a diagnosis of endometriosis. Treatment Treatment of endometriosis is justified in all patients, regardless of clinical profile, subfertility, pain, asymptomatic findings. This is because endometriosis appears to progress in 30 to 60% of patients within a year of diagnosis. Endometriosis is a chronic disease, and the recurrence rate is high after both hormonal and surgical treatment. Medical Management The main aim of medical management is to bring relief from pain. Drugs used in endometriosis can bring relief from endometriosis in either of the two ways. Pseudopregnancy drugs that bring about decidualization, for example, cyclic oral contraceptive pill progesterone, Pseudomenopause drugs, which bring about atrophy of endometrium, for example, danazole, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist, used for a short term, less than six months, due to osteoporotic potential. Drugs used progesterone, gonadotropin releasing hormone analog, nepharolin, and bucerolin. Antiprogesterone, mifepristone, oral contraceptive pill. Aromatase inhibitors, letrozole, danazole. Surgical management. The main aim of surgical management is correction of dyspareunia and infertility. The best time to become pregnant in a patient with endometriosis is immediately after surgery. Conservative surgery. This is a treatment of choice for women with infertility. Endometriotic deposits can be destroyed by electrocautery or laser. The aim of surgery is to excise all visible endometriotic lesions and lyse all adhesion, thereby restoring normal anatomy. Laparoscopic uterosacral nerve ablation. The uterosacral ligaments are a common site of endometriosis and can result in fibrosis of the inferior hypogastric nerve. Ablation of the uterosacral ligaments can be performed laparoscopically and can be beneficial in reducing pain. Radical surgery, total hysterectomy, and bilateral oophorectomy. It's indicated for women with severe symptoms when fertility is not a problem and when other modalities of treatment have failed. Management of endometrioma, chocolate cyst. Laparoscopic management is the preferred management. Small, less than 3 centimeters, laparoscopic aspiration. Large, 
greater than 3 centimeters, laparoscopic cystectomy. Endometriosis of the ovary, that is, endometrioma, bladder, and bowel, cannot be managed medically and should be managed surgically. Adenomyosis Adenomyosis is a condition where there is ingrowth of endometrium, both gland plus stroma, directly into the myometrium. Earlier, it was called endometriosis interna. Age group. Elderly patients greater than 40 years. Parity. Multiparis. Symptoms. Most common symptom. Menorrhagia. Second most common symptom. Dysmenorrhea. Pelvic discomfort. Backache. Dyspareunia. Examination. Pervaginal. Symmetrical enlargement of uterus. Not more than 12 to 14 weeks of pregnancy mobility. No associated adnexal pathology. Halband sign. Tender, soften uterus on premenstrual bimanual examination. Diagnosis. It is mainly clinical. Transvaginal ultrasonography, or MRI. Junctional zone thickness greater than 12 millimeters are helpful but not definitive. Diagnostic hysteroscopy combined with curatage can be done. Management. First-line management is levonorgestrel intrauterine device. Test of cure. Surgical. Total hysterectomy in most of the patients, as most of the patients are elderly. In younger women, localized excision can be tried or levonorgestrel containing intrauterine devices can also be tried. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.